Greetings and welcome back. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and this is part two of the awesome inventory system. So in this part, we are going to actually work on displaying a little bit of our inventory on screen through a graphical user interface. So let's jump into it. First thing we need to do is make a new object that is going to take care of all of that displaying information. We're going to call this OBJ Inventory GUI, GUI, Graphical User Interface. We're going to assign it the sprite, SPR Fantasy Inventory Sprite, uh, lengthy name, I know. And then we are going to add a create event. So inside of here, we're going to set up all of the variables, all of the data that we need to be able to properly display our inventory as we register and as we grow this object. So first thing we need is text border. This text border is going to specifically apply to this sprite in the sense that uh, right here it has a little bit of a border. You can see it has a little bit of gray and then brown and I want to display the text right here on this light gray parchment like paper. That's what our border is going to allow us to do. So if you change the sprite you'll need to change this value as well. We're going to set my items equal to player inventory and this is just so that this name is a little bit shorter because we're going to use it a lot. We're going to set my color equal to C black, which is just going to be the text color that is displayed. We're going to say is empty equal to false. And this is going to be so that if we have no items in our inventory, we then display an empty message, which is you've no items. Okay. Now we're going to set up some global variables. These variables are going to be accessed in different scripts and different objects that our OBJ inventory GUI will create. So we want to be able to access them easily and quickly. So that's going to be item selected, scrolled amount, and inventory end at. So let me go ahead and increase this window so we can see. Okay, so first off, item selected is going to equal zero. So this is going to be the item that we are currently chosen on our inventory list. We're going to have uh, scrolled amount equal to zero. We'll get to that eventually. And inventory end at is going to be a couple of different things that it can choose from. It's going to use this function called min, which stands for minimum. So it's going to to pass in several different values and then return the smallest of those. So we're going to pass in the DS grid height of my items. And that is, this is specifically so that when we are, when we choose to display how many items on the inventory GUI, we're going to choose the, uh, either the amount of items we have in our inventory, which can range from zero to 22,000, I think the array size is in here. Maybe it's 220,000. I don't know. It's something ginormous. Or we're going to display the maximum of our sprite height. And the way we get that is by using the function floor, which is just rounding down. Two parentheses here because we need to do some math in the right order. We're going to get sprite height minus uh, text border times three. So that times three is specifically so that it fits exactly how we want and doesn't display items outside of the sprite. Two parentheses at the end of that three and divide by 32 with two parentheses at the end of that as well. This math needs to be done in the correct order. You need to multiply this and then subtract it and then divide the value. So if, if you have any weird display issues, it's probably from that right there because you need to make sure the math is done properly. Another value we need to have on here is inventory on screen and that's going to set start at zero as well and then we're going to set the is empty message and inventory end at in a special case so we're going to say if ds grid get my items of zero zero which is the first item name in our list if that's equal to zero that means we know that it is empty so we actually want to display nothing on screen and we want to show our is empty message. So that will equal to true. Okay. Now that sets it all up. We're not going to use all of these values in this part, but we will in the coming parts. 
The next big thing that we need to do though is actually be able to display our inventory. We have the object, but to bring it up, we're going to add a key press of the letter I, and this is inside of OBJ inventory, okay? So create the inventory on screen. So if the inventory is not on the screen, then we want to make it. But if it is already on the screen, we want to destroy it. The way we're going to check that is through an if statement. So if instance doesn't exist, and we're going to use the exclamation point, which is not, and then the function instance exists, obj inventory GUI. So if this does not exist, we want to make it. So we're going to say inventory display equals instance create. Now, this function right here will work in Game Maker Studio 1. It will not work in Game Maker Studio 2. If you're following along in 1, then just use that, but know that you will need to separately set the depth of the object being made so that it is lower than whatever is making it, so that it is always on top of the screen. For Game Maker Studio 2, we need to use the function depth, and we actually set the depth when we make it. So we're going to create this at 0, 0, because we're going to set the x and y later in just a second. This is going to be depth minus 1, and we're going to make obj inventory GUI. Now the reason we've given it a name is that we are going to come down here and say with inventory display, and this is where you'd set the depth if you're in Game Maker Studio 1.4, we're going to set the x and the y coordinates because we want to set it based on the sprite that is being displayed for our obj inventory GUI and before this is made, we don't know what it is. I could get the information from this right here, but perhaps you've changed the sprite you want to draw, and this will allow you to change that sprite and still have it be in the correct spot, which is the bottom left corner for this specifically. So we're gonna use the function sprite get x offset of the sprite index, and the sprite index is with the object we just created. So it's the sprite index that is assigned to obj inventory GUI. And y is going to equal room height minus sprite get y offset of our sprite index. So if I press F5 and run this, we are going to be able to create our obj inventory GUI and place it directly in this bottom left corner. By doing that through this functions right here, we are dynamically setting the correct position no matter what the sprite actually ends up being. It is going to take the room height and the X and Y offset, which is set right here inside of the sprite editor window. If I change it, you can see here that then it would display differently, but I keep mine at middle center all the time. That way it makes it exactly where we need to. Now the last thing I want to do right here is say else. So if it already exists, then we want to destroy it. Now, in Game Maker Studio 1, you can't do this, obj inventory GUI. You'll need to use another with statement and then call it instance destroy on itself. But in Game Maker Studio 2, you can pass in objects to destroy themselves, which is super useful. Okay, that takes care of bringing up our inventory and destroying it. Now we want to actually focus on displaying something of our inventory. So we're going to add a draw event. on screen. Now we're going to use the variables that we've set up and the information that we have to draw the names right now of the items that we have. So the first thing we want to do is draw self. If we don't draw self then the, it will not show up at all. We're going to draw set color equal to my color that way you can change that very easily. Now before we draw the names, we need to draw the headers or the column labels. So we're going to use draw text, and I have found the value specifically for my sprite here. So if you change it, again, this will need to be changed. And this took a lot of tinkering around, so if you can't find it at the first shot, don't be discouraged, keep playing around with it. So we're going to say bbox left plus text border, bbox top plus text border, and this is going to say image. Now, bbox left and top 
are actually the bounding boxes of the sprite that you are currently calling it in. So it returns the X value of the left and the Y value of the top. That way it's going to display right up here every single time, even if we change the size of this sprite. Very useful to use these built-in variables. That way if you change the sprite or the size, it will still function properly. So I'm going to copy this and paste it twice. We need to change the X values because we need to change where they're being drawn to 125 and 225. We need to change this to name and amount. And that will draw the image name and amount. So let me, let me make sure we've got everything working properly here. I'm going to run it, press I, there's our column labels, and I can destroy it. Okay, that's working fine. Now, I'm going to create two more things here. I'm going to say item left start equals B box left plus 120. And item top start equals B box top plus 48. And that's just because we are going to be using these quite a bit inside of our drawing of the inventory and I'm just going to make them easier to access. Now let's draw our inventory. We're going to say 4i equals 0. i is less than inventory end at plus plus i and we are going to draw text and it's going to be drawn at item left start item top start plus in parentheses i times 32 that way as i increases the y position of the items that we're drawing are changing and going down further on the screen and we want to draw the value of ds grid get my items and this is going to be zero which is the name and i which is the specific item that we are on two parentheses and then we are good to go now right now you cannot run into an item and have it add added to the inventory while it's running we'll get there eventually but that's kind of like a, a just a nice feature to have but if we bring up the inventory again because this is created every single time you make it it is now there if we come over here and pick up these two items we now have a sword a red berry and an undefined item which is awesome so that gives us those things to be able to add to our inventory showing that our add item is working and now we can display those things where we want them which is just awesome so that is where we're going to end it for now that is what we've got we're going to pick up more drawing of our inventory in the next part which i hope you'll join me for if you liked this video if you found it useful feel free to share subscribe and let me know what you'd love to see from me next but as always have fun making great games and i will talk to you later if you find the content on my channel useful and you like it consider supporting me on patreon all of the people on the screen are doing so and they are awesome and they get rewards and you can join them so uh, thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.